Graphene is a wonder material made of a sheet of carbon, just one atom thick. It conducts electricity and is the strongest substance known to science. Nanotubes made of rolled up sheets of carbon have even more special properties. Practical applications of nanotubes have been limited because it's a big challenge for scientists to precisely control their properties. Now, scientists at Imperial College London have achieved some unprecedented new results in controlling nanotube properties. Today, I visited Dr. Steve Hodge on their new technique in controlling nanotube properties. Can you show us how you made a positively charged nanotube ions? We've developed an electrochemical process that can allow us to take electrons away from the nanotube powder by removing uh, the electrons at a certain voltage. Uh, nanotubes love to stick together really well, so applying this voltage, creating a positive charge, allows them to repel each other um, so much so that they then dissolve into a uh, solution of our choice. Nanotechnology is a multi-billion pound industry today. One of the ways we use it is to make coatings for self-cleaning fabrics and solar energy windows. In the coming decades, with nanotubes and graphene, we can create new stuff to replace silicon computer chips, make lighter, safer aircraft, more efficient fuel cells, and maybe, who knows, an elevator that takes us into space. I went to see Professor Milo Schaffer, who is co-director of London Center for Nanotechnology. I asked him where he sees this technology in the future. So a key challenge in nanocarbon chemistry and in application is how do you separate out the individual nanocarbon species and dissolve them into solution. And once you have those individualized species, you can separate one type from another type and you can also process them into different kinds of structure which are useful for applications. The problem is they really like to stick together and generally speaking people haven't been able to make true solutions. Um, so what we've pioneered is an approach to using charging in order to make a real solution and the approach is to make a salt so the main advantage of the nanocarbon salt is it allows you to very gently dissolve the nanocarbons into individual species and then process them into some kind of application. So for example, one possibility is to make very thin films by laying down a mesh of nanotubes. And there are various applications, but one is in transparent conductors. So this mesh that you make can be so thin that it's transparent. And it can also nevertheless be conductive and transparent conductors are useful for applications such as mobile phone screens or television screens or solar cell um, uh, systems um, but also they can be flexible you can roll up the sheet to make flexible electronics so the biggest challenge is actually keeping the system dry and free of oxygen so what we have to do is uh, apply a vacuum and, and heat to dry a nanotube powder before it goes into uh, the glove box where the magic happens and this allows us to control the atmosphere. It's full of nitrogen so there's no oxygen or moisture that can get in and ruin our experiment. Can you tell us the future of positively charged nanotubes? Now we've made these positively charged nanotubes, we've now been able to access a lot of new uh, chemical reactions so that now we can tailor the properties of the nanotubes for specific applications. So for example coatings, solar cells, and also smart screen technologies. We've seen how scientists at Imperial are developing nanotube technology. It's a big area of investment by the government, universities and the private companies, since it has great potential for the future. To find out more about graphene and nanotechnology research at Imperial, go to our website and search for nanotechnology.